I was so excited about this sequel because I loved Wes and Liz so much. And maybe we should have just stopped it after the short stories post better than the movies. Hello everyone, my name's Emily and today we're gonna to be reviewing Nothing Like the Movies by Lynn Painter. This has been a very highly anticipated release this year and we're gonna talk about it. I have a lot of thoughts. Like all my other reviews, we're gonna keep the first part spoiler free and then we'll jump into the spoilers where we'll talk about characters, the plot, notable quotes, and the book cover, and then final thoughts. Let's get right into it. So, from a spoiler-free standpoint, if you read any of the book summary, you know that Wes and Liz, the two main characters from Better Than the Movie, we ended off in Better Than the Movies, them on their way to college, getting together. They are broken up in nothing like the movies. We don't know why. All we know is Wes is trying to win Liz back, and there's a potential boy friend that Liz has that Wes is not vibing with. Overall, the pacing in the book was good. I was I was entertained the entire time. It kept me in, kept me uh, stimulated. I don't want to get too much into this because it's just going to become spoilers so quickly. The character development didn't feel natural. I'll note the character there were a lot of new characters since they're in college, but we didn't really go into depth in to any of them, so it's really hard to kind of keep track of them. Their story of kind of like them figuring out their issues to why they broke up and whatnot, a little bit rocky, a little bit, I'm not sure if they make it type situation. I was kind of hoping for a little bit more college-esque things, but the only thing that seemed college-like was they were just away from their hometown. Like they were still going to classes and Wes was playing baseball, like in the first one. And they were still part, there were still a lot of parties, which is just like the first one. So like, it didn't really feel like they were actually older. It just felt like a different setting, if that makes sense. I gave this book three stars. It felt like a kind of a generous three stars. You guys, it was, it was disappointing. I'm, Sometimes it's okay for good things to come to an end. And I know Lynn Painter even made a note that she wrote this because of all the fans of Wes and Liz. And I think we should have kept it that way. With just like them. The fan fiction, you know? Whatever else the people want to write. I can't keep this spoiler free. I have, we have to get into it, you guys. We just, we have to, because... <laughs> There's a lot. So make sure you save this video if you don't want to get spoiled so you can come right on back, but let's get right into it. We're gonna start with the characters. Let's start with Miss Liz herself. My biggest critique of Liz was she didn't feel like herself. We know obviously it's been two years since Wes and Liz have broken up. She hasn't been at home, got back to Omaha at all during this time. So clearly she's very different. Clearly she's like in college, she's maturing, whatever. She just seems so different. She seems so like standoffish. I know like her big thing was she's no longer romantic, which is like very Liz of her. But there was just something about her that it didn't feel mature. It felt like a complete switch in personality to me, if that makes sense. And she wasn't as like sometime painfully romantic, which like she got her heart broken. Okay, we'll give her, we'll give her that. Her constant gah moments internal and externally vocalized made me want to rip my hair out why are we using that so much also why are there so many a's why is she making that noise so much this is just me being petty about that moving on the fact she was civil with wes when she was under the assumption that he cheated on her crazy to me who could not catch me being civil if someone cheated on me. No, absolutely not. That was crazy to me, like, and how many, like, almost romantic moments they have when she's still under the impression he cheated on her. Miss girl, I don't know. Additionally, I feel like she had a lot of good points about, like, how Wes wasn't really communicating with her 
their first part of the relationship how he like really kind of took the decision upon himself to break up with her that she couldn't handle it how like he thought she was so infatuated with her that he had to literally lie about cheating on her to get her her to get her to leave him i completely agree with her on all those points and i feel like they never really got addressed i know there was definitely a miscommunication because that's what this entire book was was just so many miscommunications over and over and over again but i feel like she actually had a lot of very valid points and it never got resolved in any way last thing i'll note with her is i was just really annoyed with how much she kept saying like let's just move on and forget about the past and like pretend we're two like freshmen who never met before in college and like wes was naturally getting frustrated with this as was i because i'm like miss girl you can't just like forget about all those things that happen you can't like forget a complete part of someone's past because like will you treat your past self like an ex oh that wasn't the old me she can't she come, come to the film that right now also the taylor swift references i'm I've said it in another review and I'm just, we're gonna keep it short. I'm not, I think Taylor Swift references are getting overused and we'll move on from that. Let's talk about Wes. He felt so different. Granted, he became like the sole sane person in his family when his dad dies and he's 18 years old and he has to get the family finances and everything together. And now he's 20 years old trying to live his freshman college experience. Like, naturally, he is going to be very different, if that makes sense. Only thing I will note is I don't think better than the movies, Wes, would ever pretend to have cheated on Liz. Let her believe that so that he could push her away. I know there was obviously a very traumatic event, see dad death, but I don't think that felt so out of character that he was literally so cold to her at the new year's party and then she was like trying to see him and he was like yeah well she was there and you weren't when that happened i was like what we have lost the plot we have forgotten who these characters are i feel like this does not feel like him at all i will say his communication skills abysmal terrible glad he went to therapy which like should have helped him be able to like communicate his feelings more, but miss our guy, zero out of 10. So many miscommunications. That's my biggest complaint really. We're not even getting to the plot yet, but like my biggest complaint about this book is just this com miscommunication over miscommunication the entire time. And like maybe Lynn Painter was trying to find something to break them up and, but she didn't want to paint either of them in a really negative way. So miscommunication felt like easiest way to go about it but i just hate the miscommunication trope when it's like utilized over and over and over and over you know i did applaud though his efforts to get liz back and it like wasn't like in really cringy ways it was just like kind of always being there type thing like romantic gestures i think he definitely should have tried clearing the air a little bit earlier like sure she had a boyfriend which like fine he was respecting that but like as soon as she brought it up to him, he should have like nipped that in the butt right away. Be like, let me explain to you what actually happened instead of her finding it out through like him or Clark recording him and his sister talking about it. Anyway, let's talk about our guy Clark. Shout out to him for going along with this stupid fake dating idea that Liz had and calling her out on her BS constantly when he was like, Wes is trying, Wes is like actually like seems like a good eye guy. Like granted, maybe Clark was like fanboying a little bit and like he didn't know the entire story obviously, but like there were so many times I was like, Liz, oh, I don't know. Like both of them frustrated me so much, Liz and Wes. And honestly, Clark just seemed like a stellar guy, good for him. Lilith are like, producer director whatever we want to call her i know liz looked up to her but like to ask a 20 year old kid who's two years post his dad dying very intimate details about this to make it look like a like small town hero comes back overcomes adversity and becomes a star of like 
collegiate baseball team, it felt very pushy and manipulative. I didn't really care for her that much. Campbell, we love a little soccer girl. She was one of Liz's new roommates. Honestly, were they hitting, was Miss Lynn hinting at a book between her and Wade? Maybe, potentially. That's really all I know about her. Leo, okay, honestly, I don't remember anything about his description. All I could think of was Leo Valdez from Percy Jackson, and that's who I literally thought was one of Liz's other roommates the entire time. We love our little trust fund, humble baby. Wade, literally couldn't tell you anything about him besides he's on the baseball team and he likes Campbell. That's all I know about him. AJ, also don't know much about him. Seems like one of the like a, a genuine guy. There are a lot of baseball people. Ross, I think is another one. Was he the coach? I don't know. He seemed fine. Once again, a lot of characters that I like didn't really know that much about, so I couldn't remember them very well. What's his mom? So I know we all process grief differently, but to literally abandon your children, like financially, geographically, emotionally, is crazy. I'm glad she went to therapy, but like, you cannot do that. Find a support system and like you have, like you had children. Technically they were both adults. Like, no, no, the, the sister was younger than 18. You have a child you are legally bound to take care of. I did not care for how she responded to that. Wes's dad, I don't really remember him being such a jerk in Better Than The Movies, but like all of Wes's memories of him are like him like being mean to him about like baseball. And he's like, get your head in the game. Like, what was that? Blah, 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 blah. Like this kid was in high school, chill, relax. And then Liz's dad and her stepmom, Hemala, 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 Hel Helena. Love them, so cute. They love a little supportive and loving kind parental figures. Let's get into the plot. Overall, I don't have much to say about the plot because honestly, not much happened. It was just constant miscommunication over miscommunication over miscommunication where like like i said i feel like lynn was just trying to find a way to break them up that didn't put either of them really at fault and it was just this now big miss like painful miscommunication mess i'm not going to go into the specifics of like the party and the miscommunication with like why they broke up and they're failing to communicate and whatnot like it's just all a lack of communication and trusting the other person in my mind and with how Wes and Liz ended, I don't think they'll last. Like they literally brought up multiple issues of like what was going on on the other side and they never really resolved it. It was just always this like, but we're, we're us, us and I love you and no one else, no one else like, like I haven't been the same because of you. So naturally we must be together type situation. There was no discussion of change. Like how can we communicate better? How can I? support you differently how can we like if something like this were to come up again how can we go about this how can we make sure that we're there for each other there really was no discussion about that and they just like kind of like got back together because like it's just like they resorted to old times which doesn't sound healthy to me also did liz ever tell wes she was fake dating clark i like don't remember this i literally read this book yesterday and i'm thinking about it and I'm like, literally, Liz, you're doing the exact same thing. You're fake dating to the guy you were fake dating with to make someone else jealous or like to get rid of whatever in the first book. Very original, nice. Overall, I liked Liz pursuing music and filmography, the word. I'm glad Wes was able to play baseball again without like that mental block from his dad not being there and him thinking he like took out his dad. That's a lot on an 18 year old. Did that ever come up in therapy? I feel like you should address that. But overall, I just feel like so much, so much happened yet nothing happened at the same time. And honestly, like the big romantic gestures, I just like, I mean, fine. She was like in a relationship with boyfriend. So why should I have been doing that? But like, I don't know. He was just like always his like cocky self to her and like after like, Oh, two years ago, I broke your heart and I pretended to cheat on you. I'm just gonna like flirt with you still. 
It just felt not like them, and I was very confused. Let's talk about the quotes. We have quite a few, you guys. Let me pull them up. We got 23 quotes. Let's start right from the beginning. Oh, this was just like the initial shock of like, from us's standpoint, how everyone else's futures changed from his and his pivoted. And he's like, when my dad died, two weeks after I moved in at UCLA, literally imagine like two, year, two weeks into your freshman year, your like dad dies. He came home from the, Wes came home from the funeral and never left, deciding to bail on school and everything. That the future held for me as if I had a choice. Now that it's been a few months since his heart attack, I was firmly settled into full-time employment at the grocery store with a side hustle as an Uber driver. And I was just like, oh my gosh. Next quote, this just like, uh, you start off with literally finding this out. You're at the New Year's party and like Wes is so cool to Liz. And then it just goes like, two years later. And I was like, oh my gosh. All right. Okay, we're time jumping. It's scary. Oh, ugh. the next quote. So we're talking about, so Wes is talking to his coach and his coach is like, had fat sales yet? Not yet. Well, don't, he replied, give me a smirk. That'll stuff that stuff will clog your arteries and give you a jiggly ass. Stick to brewing meal plan shit. I am. I'd heard about a lot about fat cells, but I was too hyper-focused on performance right now to put a lot of garbage in my body. Let's not demonize food. It's 2024. Food does not have a moral value. All food serves a purpose, and we're not going to demonize it. I'm disappointed in that Lynn Painter. From a dietitian standpoint, very disappointed to read that. Let's move on. Our next quote, just something nitpicky I didn't enjoy. This might have changed actually in the original, in the published copy, but I'm not sure. It's just a comment from Wade. There's like nothing significant about it. They're talking about Liz. And, oh, he's talking to Liz. And he says, you're the most unromantic female I've ever met, books. Burr Books, Burr Boo, Books, Boo. I don't know how to say her next name, B-U-X. Female's not a noun. It's incredibly dehumanizing to call women females. There have been many books written about this, especially like black women have written about how this is insulting because like there's a history behind men calling women females to dehumanize them say girl or woman none of these quotes have been very helpful to the plot but let's go on next quote oh this made me this made me literally want to like rip my hair out this quote is when Wes and Liz reconnect at a party that's actually hosted at Liz's apartment and Wes is like, oh, I want, is it okay if we like talk for a second? And Liz is like, oh no, I don't think that, I don't think Clark would like that. Clark is like one of her roommates and good friends. He works in filming with her and everything and helps out with like all those, the athletics filming and whatnot. And she goes, because my boyfriend gets very jealous. It was at this moment, I'm like, we're doing this again. We're doing this again, are we? Okay. So there wasn't actually a, a boyfriend per the book summary it's just more fake dating Liz you gotta think of a new trope to use next one just this next quote is literally just like Clark being like what the F is happening right now and I was like me too Clark what is happening he's like what do you mean we're dating let's move on oh okay this tidbit where like Liz is reflecting on her and Wes's breakup and she goes, I delude myself into believing so many things about the, that conversation until I went home for Christmas break, the conversation of him breaking up with her over a phone call. Very much jerk move. Then I learned on New Year's Day, the real reason why he dumped me. It had nothing to do with his father or him somehow still loving me and had everything to do with a beautiful girl named Ashley. I've been a foolish, silly hearted little love lover back then. And I was like, oh no. I was like, literally my first thought when I read this, I'm like, this is gonna be another 
freaking miscommunication. But no, this was actually just Wes spreading lies. Good, good. This is just the first gah experience that I witnessed and I'm like, why are we using this so much? Next quote is literally that is too, gah, gah. Why would someone say that? Like I'm trying to, she's saying, gah, why am I, why are you so stubborn about this? Gah, gah. I feel like I'm not doing this right from what she's going for, but that's how I was reading it. Like, gah, 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 gah. I'm losing my mind. Okay, moving on. Okay, this was a cute little, would I even say this is cute? I don't know, this was like a semi Liz and Wes moment that reminded me of them, what they were in Better Than The Movies. When she's like actively trying, she's leaving a library and they're texting and she's like, he's like, oh, I'm also here. And she's like, oh my gosh, I gotta evacuate the area before he, she, uh, he sees me. And she, he texts her, the speed in which you're descending those steps is terrifying, slow down before you trip. So like clearly he saw her trying to escape him. And I was like, LOL. That did make me giggle a little bit. Oh my gosh. So Lilith has been pushing for Wes to do this huge interview, like about his dad's death, how they impacted him playing baseball, going home, taking care of his family, coming back to UCLA, all that stuff. And when Clark asks him in this interview, because he his like requirement was Liz did it, Liz halfway through couldn't handle it and left, and Clark took it on. And Clark goes, "What made you understand that it wasn't the right time to be playing baseball? How did you decide to pack up and leave?" And Wes goes, "When my mom left and wouldn't come home." And when I read that, I was like, "This is kind of giving Katniss Everdeen and her mom," which like is interesting to me because Katniss really resents her mom, but Wes doesn't. I don't know if it would say like resents his mom as much. The next quote is just going into even more like teasing at like what led them to like really solidify that breakup that why Liz doesn't like Wes. And then just like her talking about how her best friend questioned if Wes have to actually cheat on her. And apparently on New Year's Day, he looked at her in the eye and said that he did. And I'm like, what? Like better than the movies, Wes would literally never. Next quote. Oh, this was, this was bad. So Wes, this is the last conversation Wes and his dad have on the phone because his dad was coming to come to the exhibition game at UCLA and Wes didn't want him to come because he creates a lot of stress in Wes's life. And it's literally just them like chatting. And like Wes is clearly trying to get him to like not come. He's like, oh, it's a long drive. You don't have to come, it's just an exhibition game. And the dad goes, if I don't make the drive kid, who's gonna make sure you're ready? Not your coaches. They've got you doing yoga and writing in those goddamn journals instead of throwing the baseball. Dad, and not you. No, you'll be playing grab ass with the red head instead of focusing. Wes goes, I don't want you to come, okay? I'm already stressed about this game, so the last thing I need is you in my head. Just stay home for this one. And then his dad says, listen, kid, you've got to channel that psychological nonsense and stop being a pussy. Do you think? He said, just stay away, okay, Dad? And I was like, this guy's like low key, I don't know if I wanna say abusive, but like not, not supportive for sure. Oh my gosh. Just, so Clark is next, let's move on. We're not gonna go into anymore. Our next quote is just like, Clark is really laying it on thick, this like fake dating thing, thing, whatever. And He's like, you, oh, but then he's like breaking up with Liz very publicly in front of them, which is like such a weird thing to do. Also like how any of them isn't questioning it, they're like how it's going about, they're like, is this even real? And he's like, you look at pizza with more motion than me. And she, and then this did make me laugh where Liz was like, I got the penny ragu with meatballs, not even look, eating at pizza. And like, he's just like throwing a tantrum. And I'm like, you know what, this is ridiculous. So I kind of have to support Clark, but like, what is happening here? I feel like they're all still in high school, even though they're supposed to be juniors in college. Okay. Oh, this is rough. And then we finally find out what happened New Year's Day, where Liz, was, where Russ was super mean to Liz at the New Year's Eve party. She come back to check on him and he's like super hungover. And he's like, and she's like, tell me about you and Ashley, the girl that 
she had heard things about that he maybe had cheated on her with. And then he's like, oh, I, there's no one for you but me. There's no one for you, me but you, Lib. And I was just so busy missing you that like there was no one else. He only worked with her, so there were rumors. And he was like, does it really matter if I actually cheat on you? And she's like, of course it matters. And then he was like, I don't know, it was a blur. I can't remember exactly when one thing ended and the another began. He said this to Liz, like basically insinuating there might have been cheating. And then he's like, well, she was here and you weren't. And she's like, I hate you. And I'm like, yeah, that's a completely valid response. He, I like know he was going through a lot, but like maybe he didn't handle it well in the moment, but he should have come clean about it very quickly on like after that, if he actually like cared about Liz. Anyway. Oh, uh, this next one is just like Liz having a meltdown about how Wes was like setting up something romantic, but like he fell out of a window and like almost hurt himself. And she's like, oh, well, little Liz who would have loved this. Oh yeah, she's dead. It was like a direct Taylor Swift quote. I said I wouldn't make any more comments about that, but that was just my last one, I promise. Now I'm done after that. Oh, the next one is Clark saying that he's potentially looking for someone. I feel like Clark was low-key interested in Sarah, Wes's sister. How old is she? I think it'd only be a two-year difference, I hope. Don't want any weird things like that. Oh, this next part is just like Liz refusing to communicate with Wes and like Clark was calling her out on it and she literally like turned off her phone and like, you know what? Fine, you're entitled to respond however you like, but like I feel like there's potentially a mature way to go about it. Also at this point, did she know he cheated? Did they have that conversation yet? I think they ha did have it and she like still was like figuring out her feelings. And her dad made a good point. You don't like, they weren't involved. She didn't have to figure out her feelings for him, but it was just like, Liz, what are you doing? What's happening? Oh, and then this last part where like Liz was confessing her love to Wes after he gets hit with like a baseball and like potentially bruises a rib. It was just like the classic, another miscommunication kind of, they're all like stems of communication issues where he's listening out to her and she doesn't know that he's there, whatever. I'm now realizing I don't really have many positive quotes from this book because I just, I feel like it was a lot of the same thing and a lot of nothing. And that's my opinion, like you're free. I forgot to preface this, like you are free to like this book. This is just my opinion. There's some people that like it and that's fine. Let's talk about the book cover. The book cover is cute. I like the purple a lot. I wouldn't say it's anything crazy. There were some things in it that like, I thought that better than the movies on the cover, like some of the cartoons like were from, like were from direct parts of the story, but there was a lot on this cover that was not in there. So I, I was kind of hoping for that, but oh well. Overall, this was just a huge disappointment to me. I. I'm gonna pretend that Wes and Liz's story ends after better than the movies and the short stories. I don't think this sequel needed slash should have been written. I think we just loved them so much that we could have just ended it there. The characters didn't feel like themselves. The plot like really not, not much happened and it didn't feel like they were in college honestly or they like really matured that much. Like there were definite shifts in their personality, but I don't know if I call that maturing. And that's another highly anticipated read of the year. Bites of dust. It's been a rough year out here for the highly anticipated reads. Maybe we got to lower our expectations and the hype around them. Thanks for watching guys. Let me know, comment below what your thoughts are. It's okay if we disagree. This is a space where like, as long as we're talking about the books, it's fine. We don't have to make it personal. I mean, it's, it's literally not that big. It's not. We live in a floating rock. It's not that big of a deal. But let me know your thoughts. Did you like it? What you didn't like about it? 
If you thought this book should have been written, if you want more from them, let me know below. Be sure to like this video. You stayed around this long, may as well like it. Helps me out a lot. And then be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any videos from yours truly. Otherwise, thanks for listening guys. This has been fun. I have quite a few book reviews coming out. Like why are all the authors releasing books around the same time? Does this normally happen? I'm just now picking up on it maybe lots of book reviews coming up so definitely make sure you have bell notifications turned on so you don't miss any videos from yours too early otherwise i'm gonna go gotta go read something fun it's okay we have books coming out next week i'm excited for so life goes on we will be okay we'll catch you next week otherwise bye